This video is pretty long, so no fancy intro for this one. Just know that all of the code will be available in the description below. What's going on everyone and welcome to episode number 13 of Everyday Python Projects. We're going to leverage the power of Python today to help us save some money. And we're going to save ourselves a bunch of time. I guess that's the sound of time. And also you not smashing the like button. Do it. So I wrote a script that will scrape Expedia every 30 minutes and then email me the five cheapest flights based on my travel requirements. Check out the description below for the code and let's start saving some money. Let's start by importing everything that we'll need. Anytime you work with Selenium, you'll end up importing a ton of libraries just due to the nature of the work. Okay, this part is very important. For the entire video, we're going to utilize Google Chrome and Chrome Driver. Otherwise, we won't be able to get this to work. After installing Selenium through pip, if you haven't done so already, we have to download the right version of Chrome Driver. If you go to this website, chromedriver.chromium.org slash downloads, you'll find the links to download Chrome Driver based on whatever version of Chrome you have. In order to figure that out, click on the three dots right here, then click help and about Google Chrome. Your version number is right here. Once you click on the right file and download Google Chrome Driver, you must follow this step. Move the downloaded file to an area that you can remember or that you can get to easily. Once it's there, double click on the file and execute the Chrome Driver. Then you can close it down. I don't think you have to do this on a Windows machine, but for my MacBook, this was the only way I could get it to work without the system telling me it didn't trust the security of Chrome Driver, even though Chrome Driver is perfectly safe. Once you do this, then we can start writing code. I began by creating dictionaries for our flight information, such as where I'm going and on what dates I'll be flying. I'm using O'Hare and LAX because this flight is extremely popular and there's always flights to choose from. I'll explain in a bit why I chose dates that are a few months away, but we'll end up inputting all of this into Expedia. You might have noticed there's a space between the first letter in departure and arrival for both dictionaries right here. For some reason, there's a bug in Chrome driver where it drops the first character of the string you send, even if you write a loop to do it letter by letter. But if you put in a space before the first letter, it works just fine. Then I created a function called find cheapest flights, which will take one argument that we'll call flight info. The path is where I saved my Chrome driver, and driver is how we can open up a Chrome window. We can use this function for both the departure and the return. So instead of calling in departure flight inputs and return flight inputs, we only need to call in the keys of the dictionary like so, and then we can navigate to Expedia. Here you can see we're getting the values from the keys of flight info and assigning them to each variable. To see what we're going to do next, let's open up Expedia. The first thing I have to do is click on flights. Then I have to click on one way. Since it's much easier to run the script twice for two one way flights, instead of navigating a specific return flight, were we to do this round trip. In order to click on these elements with Selenium, we need to use what's called an X path to navigate the specific element on the page that we need to click. The basic premise of an XPath looks just like this. So it starts with a double slash, then you put in the name of the HTML tag that you're looking for, in this case A, an opening bracket, the at symbol, the name of the attribute you're referencing, which here would be aria controls, an equal sign, the value of that attribute in quotation marks, and a closing bracket to pull it all together. To figure out what tag and attribute to use, you have to inspect the page and find it within the HTML. Let's take a look at flights, for example. Flights has the X path that we just typed out. You can see here that this is an A tag and that ARIA controls has the value wizard flight PWA. The key to writing a robust script with Selenium is using an X path that only appears once on the page. If the X path appears more than one time, it's not guaranteed that you're going to select the information you're looking for. However, you can test this out by typing in your proposed XPath right here. And we see that we're able to locate an XPath. 
it corresponds to the button flights. As we can see that it's highlighted right there. And it only appears once on the page, which we can confirm by looking at this right here, one of one. Now that we know this, we can write the code to click on flights and to click on one way like so. Flight XPath is what we just described but flight element is a dynamic way to wait for the element on the page to load before retrieving it. Sometimes when you're clicking buttons on a web page, it takes some time for that information to load, so we can't assume that everything will be done immediately. We're going to have to wait for the web page to load so that our script won't crash. Here we can see it's going to wait 5 seconds until the presence of the element is located, and we're looking for the element by its xpath and right here is where the xpath will be passed in. Then we just have to do the same thing for one way. There's two parts of this project that we have to complete. We're about to get into the first part, which is filling in where we're flying from, filling in where we're flying to, the departure date, and the return date. So these next few blocks of code are extremely repetitive. For the most part, they're gonna be written almost exactly how we did it when we clicked on flights and we clicked on that button for one way. But if there's anything we have to change, don't worry about it, I will walk you through it. So here's all the code for part 1. So in the leaving from portion, it locates the xpath that I previously found through trial and error, then it waits up to 5 seconds until it can locate it on the page, then right here, it clears whatever information might already be there, it clicks the box, waits 1 second, that's what time.sleep does right here, so that there's enough time to pass in the information, and then it inputs the airport that we're leaving from. After this, it waits another second, and then this part is actually really cool, it really shows you how powerful Selenium is. It arrows down the list to the first item, and clicks enter to input that value. This is duplicated for the going to portion, but there's some additional code that we have to write for the departure date. Like before, we're going to click on this element and wait 2 seconds, but when we do that, it opens up this calendar. If the date that we're going to fly is on this page, either in March or in April, then it can pick up the date no problem, using this xpath right here. In case you're wondering where trip date is coming from, that's coming from up here which is coming in from the input that we're passing into our function. So here's the thing, let's go back to that Expedia page. So if you're trying to fly in any month that isn't March or April, let's say we're trying to fly in June, then this script is going to crash because June isn't on this page. That's where this line of code departing date element comes in. First, we're going to set it to be an empty string. The try and accept block will look for the date on that page for up to three seconds. If it can find it, then it will click on the date. If it can't find it, because our departure date isn't on this page, it will go to this accept block right here that gets activated if we have a timeout exception. Now it looks like we're throwing an error here. Uh, we probably have to import this up top. So we need to write from selenium.common.exceptions import timeout exception. So here it sets the departing date element back to an empty string and then locates the xpath for this arrow. Right here. And it clicks on it like so. That way we'll be able to go from month to month rather than being stuck with whatever is shown in the calendar when we first open it. Since we're in a while loop and departing date element is still an empty string, we're going to repeat what we just did by looking for the date. This will continue to happen until it can find the date by clicking that right arrow and going from month to month. Once it's able to do this, this code right here will click this done button and our date will be inputted. Once we're able to do that, it will then pull up the results of this page by clicking this search button right here. This is the X path for that search button and this is where we're going to click. We're going to want to give this page plenty of time to load. I think 15 seconds is enough, but if you have a slow internet connection, you might want to opt for 20 or 30 seconds because the script will crash if the page isn't completely loaded. 
All right, part one is done. Now it's time to start part two, where we set the conditions of our flight. Since I'm fortunate enough to be able to take off days from work, I really only care about taking nonstop flights. That way I can take my time and pick any flight I want instead of trying to scramble for a very specific time. It does also make this a bit easier to code, which is maybe why I did it, since there's less conditions for us to have to apply. Here's how we can check for the cheapest nonstop flights. To make this easier to visualize, I'm going to keep up Expedia so that we can see what the code is actually doing. So these right here are the expats for the checkboxes on Expedia where we can select either nonstop flights or one stop right here. And in the event there aren't any nonstop flights, I can just pass in this expat to search for flights with only one stop. So when we call the find elements by expath method of driver right here, it returns to us a list of all the elements that can be found with the expath that we passed in. If there's a box to check for nonstop flights in Expedia, then it will return a list with one element inside it, namely the element for the checkbox for nonstop flights. If this checkbox is not present, then the list will be empty. We only want to proceed if nonstop flights are available, which is why we've checked to see if the length of the list is greater than zero. Then if the checkbox can be found, we'll click on it right here, wait five seconds so that the page can load, and then search for any available flights with this line right here. So all of this is the XPath for each of the cards right here that have the flight information for the available flights. We check to see right here if the length is greater than zero because once again, we don't want to execute the rest of the script if no flights are available. Now, if flights are available, we check to see how many there are. Specifically, if there's only one flight available, we need to know because if that's true, then this option right here to price by lowest price will be grayed out. So we don't want the script to try and click something that isn't there. As for this entire mess right here, this is basically how it works. Each of these cards in the HTML has its own paragraph of text that follows this format. In this case, this card would say, select and show fare information for Spirit Airlines flight departing at 5.49 a.m. from Chicago, landing at 8.52 a.m. in New York, priced at $100. So this is all list comprehension, and it gets the five cheapest flights from all of the flights on this page, and then parses that paragraph we just spoke about to retrieve the airline information, time of departure and from where, time of arrival and where we're going, and the price for each of the five cheapest flights. This else statement does the exact same thing, but with one exception. Driver.findElement by XPath with this XPath here, clicks on the drop-down menu, from right here and selects price lowest. Otherwise, it's a repeat of everything that we just did. If we were able to satisfy everything, we'll write this print statement to let us know that all conditions were met. Then we will quit the driver so that the window closes. And then we'll return the value of flights, which has all of the flight information that we just retrieved. In the event that we couldn't select a nonstop flight, or if there are no flights at all to choose from, then we'll go to this print statement. It'll say that not all of the conditions could be met, the driver will quit, and then it will return an empty list. The last thing we have to do is to run our function for our departing and returning flights, save that information to a data frame, and then email that data frame to myself so that I can see what my Expedia scraper was able to find. We'll create a function called send email where we run the function find cheapest flights for our departure flight and for our return flight. That information will be saved to the variables departing flights and return flights respectively. Then we'll combine that information and put it into a data frame. Only if the data frame has information in it, will it send out an email. And that's what we get with if not df.empty. As for this part right here, I read a text file in the same directory as a script to get the email and password info for my garbage email account. Then I instantiate email message and assign it to the variable message. The subject of message will say Python flight info, followed by the airport we'll leave from, the airport we're going to, the date we're leaving, and the date we're returning. 
All of this information being passed in comes from the dictionaries that we created at the beginning of the video. I'll be sending this from my garbage email account and I'll send it to myself so that I receive all of the flight information. This bit here with this message.add alternative is HTML. This was the only way I could send the data frame without any formatting issues as every other method that I used either didn't include all of the information from the data frame or it was formatted extremely poorly, making it very hard to read. All this does right here is turn our data frame into an HTML structure. That way we can neatly pass our data frame in right into these brackets. We also have to declare that the subtype in the alternative message is HTML so that it's able to process all of the information correctly. Then we pass all of this into Gmail secure server using SMTP lib goes right here. And finally, we schedule this to run once every 30 minutes. This is the part you guys have all been waiting for. Let's see if we can get Python to email us the cheapest flights for those specific days, given our criteria. I forgot to mention, make sure to write schedule.clear before we actually run the scheduler. That way, any existing jobs in the scheduler is cleared from the queue. All right, let's run this and see what we get. As always, if you're using Gmail, make sure that less secure app access is turned on so that we can use Python to send ourselves emails. For me, it's on right here. And you can see we don't have any email so far. So let's see if this works. Run the script. Now a window should open up. Okay, looks like our first automated window is opening. Clicked flights, clicked one way, typed in ORD, typed in LAX. Now I should be clicking through the arrows up to June 20th. And it looks like it was able to click through it. Now here it should be clicking nonstop. Okay, clicked it. And as you guys can see, my mouse is right here, so I'm not typing or clicking anything. All right, condition satisfied, ORD, LAX. Now it's opening the second window. Flights, one way, LAX to ORD, and now it has to go into August. So it should be clicking through this just like it did for the departure. So far, so good. Okay, it was able to get it, August 28th. Non-stop once again. Remember we put time.sleep so we can take some time for everything to load properly. All right, condition satisfied. Looks good, and let's check. We should be getting an email momentarily. Oh, there it is. Let's make this a bit bigger. And it looks like we have our data frame. Okay, so here we have all of our flights here, where it's departing, landing, and the prices. So we grabbed the first five flights on either leg, and we can see because we have a size 10 data frame, here's the first set of flights right here leaving from Chicago, arriving in Los Angeles. And it looks like the cheapest flight is Spirit Airlines at $121, followed by American Airlines at $179. We have four flights priced at $105, all from American. And this time Spirit is actually the more expensive flight at $121 coming from LA to Chicago. Otherwise, it looks like everything works. Even our subject line looks good here, ORD to LAX. Departing June 20th, returning August 28th. So all things considered, I would say this is definitely a win. Now, instead of sitting at your desk all day searching for cheap flights, you can let your computer do all of the work for you, and all you have to do is read a simple email. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.